Yeah. Okay, so our, our thoughts for the layout go like this. So maybe let's put the coffee here, bringing a space back from the window of one meter, which we figure allows two people room to cross past each other. Hey Leah, what's up? What's happening? Flat white, please. Flat white. Sure, come right up. <laughs> oh, but wait, Dave, I've got 20 people ordering coffee, so can you come and steam milk with me? Sure. Sure, sure. great. Okay, so you will stand here, which is the end of the coffee bench, and this is a space to walk out to deliver coffee, and also to allow someone else to help with coffee prep. So that bench actually comes back to a bit here. It's a 900 wide bench from there to there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 150 shelf underneath it. Yeah, yeah quite a, it's got quite under a bit to save ourselves from all of the coffee mess. And then a fridge, storage, everything else you need. Probably the grind um, tube would go in the corner there and then shelves up on the wall. Power and, uh, and water already there. The only issue with this is uh, getting waste out from the coffee machine. If there was enough fall to get it to the existing waste out from the hand basin, um, and also it, it's quite so it's sometimes very good to have a hand basin just on the wall close to where the coffee machine is for uh, milk and things like that and rinsing and yes. so on and so forth. Yep. So just we just yep. had, uh, if we ever put a station and we'd have a tiny little basin there for scalded milk, um, washing out jugs regularly and stuff like that. This also helps you comply with your council regulations for hand washing sinks. So you can it just have one up yep. front, you can call it a hand washing sink and just pour anything you want down it. Yeah. That's good fun. Yeah. And so then this is um, till customer interface, whatever you want to call it. But, but what we've done here is that we've removed a big amount of, of stuff taking up space to the doorway. So we're yeah. trying to provide a more enveloping area for people. So that it doesn't block you from the people coming yeah. in. Yeah. Yep. Drinks fridge is over here. Drinks fridge over there. And then this is a cabinet of some description, be it chilled or not chilled. Um, and it sits somewhere here close to the tool person so they can get out something, put it over here, do whatever they like. And over here, smoothies, mm -hmm. um, other like... There might be a light, a light press that you have there, so yeah. you, you don't have to fire up the big boys until lunchtime. Yep, for your paninas. Um, yep. And then... And uh, so the hot light of the kitchen starts around here. Here, yep. Uh, so, so here is a bench with an upstand that runs um, along to wherever the kitchen is deemed terminate. to terminate. I, I'd sort of be looking at maybe three metres of prep space to allow two people to prep together um, because it should be mostly prep that, and people helping out and then at, at lunchtime service one person should be able to get it done more or less on their own. But then existing uh, hood, so we can't really shift that um, or it would be too expensive to do it. Yep. Uh, I would keep the firepower that's in here, add a deep fryer, put a, a gas mounted uh, or a wall mounted gas salamander style grill and I would have a 610 litre scope uh, single door fridge which will hold everything you need for a busy service. Um, and and I would, I would have in the storeroom another double door, maybe 1500 litre fridge that would have all of your ongoing prep. So the biggest thing is moving the food. So deliveries would come in, into the kitchen, be sorted, be squared away. Uh, that's a big thing that we sort of haven't considered, but it's always gonna come through the front door from what I can see. There's no back door There's no back door, is there? there. Uh, only if it went down the riff raff. No, yeah, that's not no. going to work. Okay. okay, so that's fine. So deliveries come in, they're mustered in this area um, and either bought out straight for prep or put Take into the back fridges yep. or in the store and back there. Yep. And bulk prepped items like dressings, mayos, salad greens, all of that sort of stuff, they get um, punnetted and put into the right type of containers and then taken to the back. And then at the end of the day, after a day, if the day is busy, you restock this front fridge from the back fridge. So. So this the space is good for two people in the weekends. Yeah. You could you could do a lot of brunch. So you've got one person working here, cooking one yeah. person here, cleaning up, and serving or running yeah. food straight out the side. And and, yeah, and and the chefs will often just run the food. If it's just over here, you just take it yourself. Then. Uh, so now, so there's a, a, walk, a, re, a walkway here. Obviously the. And another entrance into the back this space. This is the start of what becomes the dish slash 
second prep area. So the dishy area down the back is a human rights issue. Yes. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, cruel and unusual to send someone. You'll, you'll just spend all your time walking backwards and forwards, and yeah. you'll, you'll and crashing into people. It will, it will cost you thirty-five thousand dollars a year in, in, in labour. Uh, you'll need an extra something. staff member. You just yeah. don't. You need to run the business on as minimal staff as possible. Yeah. So uh, uh, we were proposing using the underbench dishwasher um, and, and an underbench oven in this area. It could be a pastry area used yeah. early morning for baking and then running into a dish area throughout the peak times. Yep. Um, so. so probably the one biggest factor that comes into that is building that this would, there would be a wall here that would block this off from people. Yeah. Right. How high is that wall? I don't know. It could be, yeah, I, I would go as high as we could simply because it'll just be shelved for the myriad of plastic containers for the storage. Yeah. So this is all, so so this is the one closed in part of your kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, everyone, and, and it just needs to cut the noise down so it doesn't reverberate out here around. If you went um, up to say eight foot, you could have decent shelving, which would fit all of your little plastics, all your big plastics, and uh, also baking, uh, we'll need to keep baking goods up here like flour and bits and pieces like that. So that um, would be under the bench. So it's a dish bench uh, over peak times and off peak times it's used for baking and uh, sweet preparations and pastry. Yep. Which is all, it's about not having um, a space underutilised and, yeah. and so not creating, uh, yeah, not, yeah. But even so, depending on what happens with this space, if this was seating and there was a band playing, you could still perhaps see them from where you sat if they were playing at the, at a, the end of the mm. of the building or wherever yeah and then that just means that that whole back kitchen area is um just there's a storeroom quiet. so yeah. we would we would propose if we were uh, in the space that this would just become part of the cafe space and the, and the storeroom would essentially be this area here yeah um and have uh, a large refrigerator uh, uh, and then and have just shelving to the ceiling for all your bits and pieces. Um, is that a toilet on the other side there? Is that also a storage? That's the toilet, hey? That's the yeah. toilet, yeah. So, and so, so do you see this as being all open? Yeah. yeah. Or or you could actually run quite a big L-shaped storeroom and then have this here. Which I yeah. think that what you're, I, I think people underestimate the amount of storage they need. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, small stories uh, create uh, problems with ordering and, and wastage because people can't see everything. Sure. Um, so you need to make these areas quite user friendly. Um, yeah, that's our belief. And, that, and that's about that's what that's what we do.